I put my priorities on a president who's going to have the backs of our allies and hold our enemies to account, who would secure the border, no more excuses. A president who would support capitalism and freedom. Trump has not been perfect on these policies. I've made that clear many, many times. But Biden has been a catastrophe. So I will be voting for Trump. Nikki Haley, Trump's final opponent in the Republican primary, announced that she will be in fact voting for Donald Trump in the general election in November. And it came as a shock, a surprise to no one except for the establishment talking heads on cable news who for some reason were under the assumption that Nikki Haley, a neoconservative, was going to vote for Biden over Trump. So here's MSNBC's Nicole Wallace declaring that only experts could decipher Haley's extremely obvious decision. We need shrinks and and cult um, experts to explain this because with what you're reporting, it doesn't make a lick of sense. So look. I expected Nikki Haley, I expected everyone who ran in the GOP primary to tuck tail and vote for Trump in the general. So I wasn't surprised by this jank. But look, Nicole Wallace is a neocon, right? Nicole Wallace is a neoconservative who was absorbed into the Democratic Party because she's a never Trumper. And I think because Nikki Haley is a neocon, she was under the assumption that maybe Nikki Haley would go in the same direction. By the way, the absorbing of neocons in the Democratic Party has been awful and a detriment to the Democratic Party, if you ask me. But nonetheless, here we are. And so I can kind of understand the surprise from Wallace because as you've mentioned so many times before, Jenk, people tend to see the world or view the world through their own lived experiences or their own experiences in general. And so she's probably judging Nikki Haley based on what she, Nicole Wallace, would have done as a neocon. Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's gonna make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you, thank you. So uh, she's, yeah, I totally agree with you. I think she's surprised that she's like, what, we have this perfectly great racket. <laughs> like, why don't you just endorse Biden and then come become an MSNBC host, just like I did. And then you get paid a lot of money. Uh, Oh, you're gonna go with the other racket. You still, oh wow, that's surprising. You think that Trump's gonna win and then you're gonna make more money as a Republican. Well, okay, wow, okay. I'm gonna have to look into cults. Get out of here with a cult talk. You were part of the Dick Cheney cult that led to hundreds of thousands of innocent Iraqis being killed because of the cult you were in. So look, guys, you see me say uh, probably hundreds of times on the show, if somebody comes to your side, great, take the win, right? And so like even earlier today, I was talking about Bernie Sanders. Somebody said, "Oh, he came to support the Palestinians in Gaza in this particular conflict too late. No, not too late. He, he's here, he's on the right side, he's doing wonderful things. And he's one of the rare guys fighting back, appreciate it. So what's the difference between him and Nicole Wallace? Nicole Wallace didn't come to our side. It's same thing with Joe Scarborough. They don't push any uh, progressive uh, policies, any traditionally democratic policies. They just push the Democratic Party to be neocons, uh, in being in favor of corporate tax cuts. So they, they're just trying to turn the Democratic Party into the old Republican Party. So she, that's why she's aghast that Nikki Haley, she's like, don't you see what me and Joe and all everybody at MSNBC is doing? We've turned the Democrats into the Bush and Cheney party. Why don't you join us since you're a neocon just like me? Okay, fine. I mean, you could be personally hurt by it, but a Republican running against Trump, then turning around and supporting Trump. That is the single least surprising news event of my lifetime. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I didn't even think it would be a news story. Like, why is this a news story, right? All right, well, yeah. let's uh, go to MSNBC's Joe Scarborough, who stated that he also, Jenk, was not surprised by the endorsement before listing off all the reasons why he was, in fact, surprised. So let's take a look at that. It is mind boggling that somebody who actually claims to know anything about policy, would say what she just said. Like I said, I'm not shocked that she's cynical. She's been cynical her, her entire political career. Doesn't shock me she went back to Trump. 
I'll let you go from there. I'm just, I'm seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm not shocked at the endorsement. I am shocked that, that she would sink so low so fast and just lie about the facts as badly as she did. Mm-hmm. Morning, Joe. How are you? Um, I, it seems like I'm doing, the, I'm doing well. How are Rudy you doing? The Rudy coffee, the Rudy coffee is flowing. No, no. I mean, if you're not shocked by that, John, I know it's very I funny. Am. Ha, ha, ha. But if you're not shocked by her lying through her teeth that way. Morning Joe is one of the worst shows on cable television. It is like unbelievably bad. But anyway, Jenk, uh, what are your thoughts on what he had to say there? What's hilarious is that like everyone in Washington watches Morning Joe. I know, it's, I know. It's, it's the so most, devastating. It really is. It's the most celebrated establishment show in history. Like, I mean, your Jake, and, your favorite website covers Morning Joe clips more than any other show in existence. Every upset. morning, Mediaite is like, "Oh, we love Morning Joe. What did Morning Joe say today? Who cares?" He says nothing got, of substance. <laughs> Come on. I got I got news for you. Here's what Morning Joe said, uh, an establishment talking point. Hundred percent. I could predict. I could predict ahead of time, every single thing they say on every single morning. So here, the kerfuffle is. John Heileman doesn't mind her being a neocon on the Republican side. And Joe Scarborough would like her to be a neocon on the Democratic side. Correct. Wow, what a controversy. <laughs> They're lighting up the airwaves. <laughs> so yeah, it's, look, Donald Trump said the worst things in the world about Ted Cruz and his family. He said the worst things about Nikki Haley and her family. But this is what Republicans do. He doxed Bill, uh, Lindsey Graham, right? And they, they were some of them were afraid for their lives on January sixth. That day, later, a couple of days later, at the airports, when Trump MAGA guys would come up to them and threaten them, etc. And they're all still on their hands and knees, groveling and groveling. Oh, master, please, please let us into the Republican scam you're doing. We still want to make money. Come on, I think you can give the tax cuts an even bigger break than the Democrats and. They're right about that. So that's why, by the way, the most important part is not these politicians, they're all servants. They're all figureheads. What Nikki Haley's turn shows, and the most important part of the story is that a lot of the Republican donors that were opposed to Trump have turned and are now going, okay, Donald, yeah, you can bring the fascists and we don't mind, just throw in a tax cut. Yeah, the, the final thing I'll say about this is, you know, for ordinary voters, I'm not talking about, you know, former presidential candidates who lost in the primary. I'm talking about regular people. It's becoming increasingly difficult to support either party, right? Because of the corporate takeover of both parties, because of how on a lot of issues that have real world effects for ordinary people, there's really no daylight between the two parties, right? Both parties, for instance, are 100% on board with supporting everything that Israel wants to do. So if that's an issue you care deeply about, you have no options in the election. And so it's just incredibly frustrating. You hear words like uniparty from voters and, and critics of what our government has become. And I tend to agree with them. And so when you look at someone like Nikki Haley, yeah, I, I knew she was gonna support Biden, but I don't think she likes Trump either. So well, what do you, where do you go? Where do you go as a poor neocon in America today, <laughs> right? The neocons no, the are disempowered, thing is so, Anna, which is a good thing, yeah. No, no, but uh, no, the ironic thing is the neocons still run everything. So yeah. you can go to the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. It doesn't matter if Israel wants to start a war, both parties will start a war for them. And if they want $20 billion after they've annihilated all of Gaza, both parties will give it to them. Right. If Netanyahu wants a standing ovation in Congress, both parties will give it to him. What gives so them the neocons the are just still firmly in charge. But my point is what gives them the power is not the voters. What gives them the power is the legalized bribery in our government, which has captured yes. both parties. So 100% right. Yeah. And that's what Joe Scarborough loves. True. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video.
Thank you.